What's crack lock and challenger welcome back to a brand new video and today I'm sharing with you my addiction So uh, this started a couple months ago And uh, I posted some things on Instagram and snapchat and I got some messages telling me that I should just make a video And share this with you guys because it might seem interesting to some of you It also might freak some of you out so next to me in all these different bunches of containers. I have living insects Basically just millipedes and isopods and these guys are absolutely cool. You might think that they're kind of nasty and scary But I can assure you they're all 100% safe for humans uh, I'll talk more about their care and some of the cool things about them later in this video So stay tuned I kind of want to just go through every single one show you some close-ups of what we have in there And I also need to mist them down and feed them so without further ado, let's get started So uh, I actually printed out all these labels for each one and it has the name not only the common name But also the scientific name it tells the humidity and also the temperature that you should be keeping them at. Uh, this is helpful for me when I'm going through with a little thermometer. I'm able to check all these little terrariums and make sure that they're okay for these guys. So getting started with the first terrarium, our little container, these are the powder orange isopods and I ended up drilling holes all on the top of each one of these containers. I just picked them up from Walmart and they're pretty cheap when you get them in a pack of like 10. I also drilled holes on the side and then it helps for airflow uh, because these guys really do require quite a bit of oxygen. This also helps keep humidity down so it's not 100%. It'll be somewhere between 50 to 80% for this container. Container. So about once a week or a couple times a week I'll have to crack this open spray it down and also give them some food So we already have a couple of them crawling around I'll have to come back with a second angle so I can show you everything But in here I just have some moss some pieces of wood and my own mixture for isopods It has wood chips and that helps them eat. I really really like these orange isopods I also have the scientific name Porcininondis pernusus. Huh. I'm working on my entomology skills and scientific names are just part of those uh, so please do not butcher me uh, I've I've been able to pronounce a couple of these pretty well, but uh, so far I'm trying I'm trying to learn So what what I have to do is I have this just gallon mister uh, and I fill this up I use this for a lot of my other insects and uh, Reptiles and stuff just because I have so many it's easy to have a mister This also cuts back on how much time it takes But I just spray in one little section of the container uh, and this just helps them hydrate They sometimes drink the water off the walls and it also helps just keep the humidity up for their body and their skin I'm gonna put this colony aside and get started on the next one So you may be asking what are isopods and what do they do in nature? So isopods are decomposers and what they do is live around on the forest floor They'll eat old dying leaves old dead matter and trees and other wood things They'll sometimes also eat dead animals Which really helps with the ecosystem because instead of having all that dead stuff just laying around Decomposing slowly with fungus and other things and, and having the weather like take care of it These guys really speed up the process of that ecosystem and they are incredibly helpful uh, So one thing like this terrarium is they do get mold every once in a while. So I've seen some recommendations for keeping the humidity, but when you're keeping them, it's basically inevitable that you're going to get some mold sprouts. So what I do is get a tweezers and just pluck it out and throw it away. Uh, and I'm going to quickly do that really quick. Here are the tweezers and I just have a little cup that I'm just going to scoop it into and uh, get rid of it. It's not really healthy to breathe in. So when you're doing this, you'll want to be prompt with the disposal. You also not want to just like take deep breaths of it. Uh, you'll just want to make sure you clean it up. But this colony is my dwarf white colony. And these are just a white ice pod. Uh, I see quite a few new ones in here. So they are breeding, which is awesome. So these isopods that I'm showing you, you won't really find them in nature just because these ones have been bred in captivity to be having these variations, these colors, these unique traits. And that takes a long time of selective breeding. There are some species that you'll be able to find in different parts of the world, and then they get bred out for the best quality, and then they'll be eventually sold into the hobby. This is the same with the fish community. I apologize if you only subscribe to this channel for fish stuff, but I've really enjoyed some terrestrial stuff stuff, including these isopods and millipedes, and also my uh, geckos and stuff. I've just been really enjoying that and uh, expect to see some more content on that. But I will be making some fish videos soon. This is another container. This one is containing my peach isopods. Uh, I picked these up at a reptile convention show. Uh, that's actually where I got quite a few of these. Um, I did also order some online, but the peach isopods, I've noticed that they haven't been the best for me. Compared to some of the colonies where you'll see they'll be flooded with uh, living isopods or millipedes, this one hasn't been the best for me, unfortunately. I don't know if it has to do with the humidity or just the group that I bought uh, from the show, but they are a really 
unique looking one. Uh, they have some really cool colors. Again, this is the little name tag that shows you what they are. And in each one of these containers, I have a big piece of wood because millipedes and isopods love wood. They eat that in nature, so it's just smart to have that in the terrarium. So next up, we have our powdered blue. I bought these ones online. Uh, I think I got these from like eBay or something. Uh, I bought like 40 or something. It was a pretty big package, but uh, they should all be in here. And wow, yeah, they, these guys are really active. I'm, I'm just hoping that this camera picks it up. I will be going through with some uh, second camera to get some angles for you guys, but you can just see all of them on this piece of choya wood. They just love it. And you might be asking, what is this little container? Uh, I actually have been making these with my 3D printer and I've been selling them on my Etsy. Uh, I also sell some other insect and reptile supplies. Link down below, I just made it, it's my new thing. And I've honestly just been enjoying making these products that people love uh, for insects and other weird people that like these things like me. So those were the powdered blue isopods and now, okay, these are dwarf whites. I'm not really gonna get these on camera. I've literally only seen them twice in this enclosure. These ones are similar to springtails. They're super microscopic. If you thought these other uh, isopods I've been showing are small, they're about like this big. These guys are like microscopic. You'll like never see them. I've looked so long in here uh, and I, oh, I might have found one. It's just a piece of dirt. I, I have no clue how well they're breeding in this enclosure just because I've never really seen them. So I'm just fingers crossed that they are doing okay. <laughs> nothing, nothing really to show there. Ooh, we have our first millipede of today's video. So uh, this is the giant American millipede. Honestly, by far one of my favorites. Uh, they are awesome. And one exciting thing, I have been breeding them and I plan to sell them. I actually contacted the USDA to get the permits and stuff to be able to ship these guys across the US. So if you are in the US and you might want to pick one of them up, uh, I will eventually be having them available for sale. Uh, can you see them? There are quite a few in here. Uh, let me see if I can grab one. They, uh, they're they pretty sensitive. They are, they are like the largest one you can get in the US. I've made some videos on them in the past or featured them, but uh, you guys see that? You see that there's two of them on a piece of wood. I'm gonna put them down because I do not want to disturb them too much right now. Uh, I do really want to get some close-ups of these, but yeah, they are just really cool. They they get about like this long, and really you can just keep these as pets. Uh, I have some decorative containers and terrariums that I'll be showing eventually, but I just want to show you my breeding setups for all these guys. But yeah, you are able to keep these just in their own little terrarium and uh, just have them walk around. They're really active at night uh, because it's safer for them, but you can also see them during the day crawl around. And what's great about all of these is they, since they are natural decomposers in nature, if you want, you can just keep these and throw your old scraps of food in there, like lettuce, other random things that you just eat. You can throw them in there and they'll most likely eat it. They mostly enjoy like vegetables and old fruits. So you can feed them. There's a couple things that you want to avoid, but overall you can just like throw your old scraps in there. It's free. It helps them grow. They can breed. And then you can have just really cool pets. Uh, what's our next one? Ooh, these. Okay. Out of all of these, these are probably my favorite. And I like them so much. I ended up buying two of them, like two massive packages of them. I got them at a reptile show. I made a video on the first one I went to, but there was another one that I didn't film really at all. I ended up picking these up from Supreme Gecko. This guy is awesome, Wally. He has a YouTube channel uh, and he just basically educates the hobby so well in gecko information as well as isopods. And you really don't see a lot of that. So uh, huge shout out to you. I purchased them from him, supported him completely. I also bought a package on eBay and I put them all in this one colony and they're basically were able to breed very well. I've already seen so many babies in here and I love this setup so so much. One great thing about these guys is they're really prolific, meaning that they breed like really fast. Oh, I don't want to drop any, but uh, I hope it doesn't focus on my face. Oh, I just dropped one. Did it go? Oh no. Did he go on the ground? Ugh. Okay. I, I fingers crossed that it just landed in there. But yeah, I've seen, I, I see babies right here. And these are just my favorites by far, just because they're so large. They're one of the largest isopods that I have. They're really active. Like a lot of them aren't hiding underground and you can see quite a few just walking around on the surface of the container and I love that because you actually get to see them so I'm planning on making such a beautiful terrarium for them I'll definitely have to make a whole video just on these guys again they get really large they breed really fast and they just look really cool they're called dairy cow isopods because of their coloration they're like black and white and I live in Wisconsin so I should know things about cows I think right <laughs> okay so the next one is the greenhouse millipede so I actually collected these from nature uh, some of my backyard some of
some of my friend's property. And these are pretty popular, basically everywhere in the US. Um, I don't really condone taking things from the wild unless you're doing what I'm doing, which is basically just keeping them in their own container. You won't want to get something from the wild and like put it in a reptile container or your other pets because they might have any bacteria or other nasty things that you don't want to be spreading between your setups and between your pets. But these guys are microscopic. They're only about like, uh, I don't know, 10 millimeters, a centimeter, uh, or maybe a centimeter and a half. I promise I'm not flipping you guys off. That is my, uh, oh, I don't know if you guys can see that right there. He's really, really tiny. But yeah, I have like probably a bunch, probably a hundred <laughs> in this one little container. I also caught some wild isopods and they're just in here breeding. Um, this is more of just a fun thing. I wouldn't really want to sell these guys just because I caught them from the wild. Uh, yeah. And the, uh, the same goes for these ones. These ones I have unfortunately not had the best success with. These are the cherry millipedes and they release a mixture. I think it's like hydrogen pro or no hydrogen cyanide. Yeah. Cyanide. So like I said, these things don't really bite, but the millipedes can secrete like some, sometimes the, the chemicals can vary, but when they're being attacked or eaten by wildlife, they can secrete like a liquid or spray a liquid. And that makes the animal want to spit out the uh, insect and the millipede so they don't get eaten. These these ones spray hydrogen cyanide, so it's a little scary. And they are very brightly colored, but I lost almost all of the ones I caught. Uh, and I caught these at my friend's house, um, but unfortunately, yeah, they, they haven't been doing the best in, in my setup. And uh, from what I've seen online, people don't really keep them as pets, and I believe it's for that reason, just because they're really hard to keep in captivity. But that being said, that is all of my containers. Let's see how many we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. And uh, this setup right over here that you might be able to see is literally just some powder orange isopods, scarlet and bumblebee millipedes. Those are the only things in that terrarium. Not for long, I have some plans to change that. But yeah, these are all my insects. If you wanna see some more videos on insects, please let me know if you enjoyed this. I'd very much like to know, just because this is another passion of mine and I plan to share more of it if you wanna see that stuff. I think that this is just such a great hobby and huge shout out to all the people that have made videos on isopods to be able to teach more people and teach me. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy. Wow.